Welcome to part three of the Road Faster series where I walk you through my whole coaching process so that you can learn from it, uh, get educated and go away and implement it on yourself. Hopefully use it to get yourself long-term consistent results, uh, get you enjoying your training a little bit more, get more fulfillment and ultimately just increase your quality of life. So this is the third part. Previously we've covered long-term planning uh, and the weekly breakdown of training. This part we'll be looking at splits, some of the mainly looking at UT2, UT1 splits. Which it's a question I get asked quite frequently and there's kind of a lot of information out there about it and then cover roughly some stuff about the higher intensity which uh, becomes a little bit trickier again depending on the, the training session that you're doing and what, what the emphasis is. So why is knowing the right splits important? Well, of course, there's many reasons. Being mainly looking at the majority of the training that I advise, which is polarized training, spending 80% of your time at a low intensity, making sure that's in the right intensity so that you're not working you're, you're not working too easy and you're not working too hard, but most of the problems, 95% of the time, comes around, not, comes around from working too hard. So <clears throat> generally, again, just to touch on this, this isn't what the video is really about, but working too hard at UT2 and UT1 means you basically just start to build up fatigue hormones, which are called catecholamines, um, either kind of nor epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, and you know, there's good fatigue that we want and there's bad fatigue and these hormones have been shown to negatively impact your training, cause overtraining, increase injury, cause it causes plateaus and also means that you can't work with your high intensity to the right intensity. Now there's many different ways that you can find out your splits. Again, a lot of it depends on the individual and what their physiology is like, how aerobically they're how aerobically efficient how aerobically efficient they are you know their training background what their training has previously looked like and then also how long they've been doing certain types of training for it's often a case at the start you kind of have to be conscious if you're trying sort of the new polarized approach that it can take three to six weeks for you to really get used to that training zone and your splits can end up dropping quite a lot in the ut2 zone as your body gets more efficient to it but anyways into how to find out what the what your split should be so into how to find out what your split should be so there's sort of three ways that you can use, three sort of basic ways apart from, you know, communication and feedback. There's three methods you can use to determine what your UT2 and sort of UT1 should be. There's percentage of max heart rate. You can use RPE, which is rate of perceived per exertion. You can use RPE, which is rate of perceived per exertion which is basically how hard out of 10. And there's a couple different scales you can use, but I find that just out of 10 is the simplest one. And then the kind of last one, you can use basically a percentage of your ERG scores. So a percentage of watts, again, that's something I'm gonna discuss. <clears throat> percentage of watts and not split. For 2K, 5K, again, you could use 6K, but in this example, I'm gonna be using six, um, 5K. And you can also use your 30 rate 20 scores. So firstly, why watts? Now, <clears throat> to try and put it simply, if you were to, basically the relationship between how hard going from a low split, so say going from a 130 to a 129 is harder than going from a two minute split to a 159. That's because that one second is it makes up a larger percentage of the change at the lower rate. So why what? Okay. So if we had, we're gonna talk about a 130 split and then say a two, a two minute split. <clears throat> okay, and this circle represents the total time that it takes to complete or to complete 500 meters. So we'd have a smaller circle. So the total time for, again, this is represents 90 seconds or 130 split is 90 seconds. And then two minutes is 120 seconds. So it's gonna be a bigger circle or a bigger pie because there's more seconds in it. Again, I'm gonna, this is obviously not to scale, but I'm just gonna try and draw this for an example. So if we had sort of one second, if we had one second equals like basically this much. That represented one second of this of this total 90 seconds. It would kind of look like this if we were to slice it out of a pie. <clears throat> 
Now if we then took that same representation of one second and put it on two minutes or 120 seconds, again this equals one second, you can see that that change is much more representative of, you can see that that change is much smaller. So imagine <clears throat> you had two pizzas, relatively speaking, again, don't get too into the reference. If someone was to take, if someone was to take a, a bite out of this, <clears throat> see if Pac-Man was gonna take a bite out of that. So obviously this slice here is much better relatively to the size of the pizza is much bigger than this slice here. Okay, and that's why we don't just want to add or subtract splits from a score. It's why we want to use percentages. Okay, if we had two graphs, this is speed. Okay, these are in splits and these are watts. Now what happens when we look at speed for splits, kind of as we're going up, it's kind of starts gradually like that, but then as the 30 second changes, they gradually, as it, the effort taken for these sort of 30 second gradual changes starts to increase like that, and it's not linear. So the change from here to here is smaller than the change from here to here. If we look at, again, if we're looking at the changes from there to there, we can see it's a much bigger change. So representatively, splits are not a linear function. <clears throat> With watts, however, if you were to plot it, your speed is directly related to how many watts you're doing. So a straight line, so <clears throat> from 50 to 100, again, this is gonna be rough, and from 200, these are equal. So the changes are equal. So that's why we want watts and not splits. And that's why we want to use a percentage of watts and not simply adding watts or subtracting splits. <clears throat> now we can kind of get into percentage of max heart rate. So generally for UT2, in my experience, what I find is that a percentage of your max heart rate, roughly, it's best when it's around 65% to 72. UT1 is around 72-ish to maybe 80. <clears throat> so if your max heart rate, 200, your UT2 would be 200 times 0 0.65 to 200 times, which would be roughly 130 to... Okay, now how do you find that out, like, in terms of a split? Well, basically you have to just go off and guess at what split you think is gonna take, and then do your session, and as you're, say if you start to hit 144 fairly early on, then you're gonna obviously want to back off. And then at the end of that session, go back and look at your heart rate versus your splits. Look at when it started to set, stabilize, if it started to stabilize at a certain split that you were holding. Sometimes you also have to account for heat as as well where it's going to kind of be avoidable that your heart rate keep climbing as you get dehydrated but kind of a generally a good once you've got a good understanding of it once you're 10 minutes in you shouldn't be you shouldn't be any more than 10 beats lower than what your max heart rate is <clears throat> so if you're deciding that 144 is going to be your max heart rate 10 minutes in you shouldn't be any less than a hundred and you should 10 minutes in, you shouldn't be any more than 134 beats per minute. If you're above that, you probably know you're gonna have to slow down. Okay, so how, uh, off, uh, another question I often get asked as well is how do you find your max heart rate? Well, basically you're gonna have to measure your heart when you're going as quickly as possible. So to be honest, in my experience, the 30 rate 20 is probably one of the best ways to find that out. Obviously a 2K as well. Uh, the shorter the effort though, the harder it is to determine what your max heart rate is. You can often just do the 220 minus your age. That works, but it's not always simple. You can kind of, what I kind of find works best is if you do the 220 minus your age. So say your age is 40, so. 220 minus 40 equals 180. But you've also seen your max heart rate at your age of 40 being around, you've seen maybe like a 188 or something like that. These are meant to be eyes. <clears throat> what I would do in that circumstance is kind of find the middle ground. So I would say probably somewhere around a 184 would be roughly where you'd be guessing. Now this is all guesswork again. It's it's very much like you have to learn as you go. Um, but then that's kind of where we move on to the second part. Okay, this is quite a simple one. Uh, RPE, rate of perceived. So how hard you would rank it out of 10. <clears throat> I'm gonna put the emphasis on perceived here as well because that's relative to you. My five out of 10 is not the same as 
your five out of ten. Same with some of your training partners as well. Some people, you know, in training like to be the big dog, and when they're after a test, you know, they've done a good score, and they'll say maybe a five out of ten when it's clearly been a max effort. So some things to consider. But generally, what I would say is. 1 out of 10 is like a brisk walk. 10 out of 10 is the hardest you can go on that day. Okay, it's not the hardest you've gone ever. It's not your hardest ever thing you've done in your life. Uh, but it's, again, just relatively. So for UT2, you kind of want your UT2 to be a 2 to a four out of 10. You can also kind of use the sentence test where you're able to speak a set, uh, like a long sentence. So for example, I am able to speak a long sentence <gasps> without taking a breath. That's another way that you kind of know you're in the two to the four range. And then UT1, again, UT1 should still feel easy, but yeah, that's kind of kind of be in the three to the five range. So a bit of overlap there. But again, this is kind of the combination you can use while determining your training. Again, pretty simple one. I actually find that this, once you get, you've built a relationship with your coach or whoever and you guys have trust and you understand how each other works, simply just like how hard, how does it feel? Uh, you understand your body best and you're gonna, you're gonna know like what you should be feeling and when. Okay, so lastly, we can kind of have a percentage of test watts. So what I would say is basically looking at our 2K, our 5K, and our 30 rate 20 watts. So again, I'll walk you through how to do this, uh, how to use the split to watt calculator, and then how to calculate a percentage of it. So for our 2K, our UT2 is around 45 to 52% of your map, of your 2K watts. <clears throat> your 5k, your UT2, is around, I'd say, 54, 55% to around 62. And then for our 30 rate 20, we're around 65 to 72. So I'll quickly show you how to use the Concept2 um, calculator. So you just type in, like, Concept2 watts to pace calculator, and then it comes up. But let's say, okay, our 2k is a 145 uh, split, so a 7-minute 2k, we've got a 302. So our 2k watts are 302. So, so, so from there, we do 302 times 0 0.45 to around 302. I'm just going to write them all down first, 0 0.52. Okay, I'm just gonna write down the notes first before we go and do the calculations to save me going back and forth. Okay, and then let's say maybe our 5K split is a 151 to 255, so just call that 5K watts. So again, we're gonna do 256 times 0 0.54, and then 256 again, this is roughly 0 0.62. Then lastly, we'll calculate our 32 and then write down the calculations. So again, see, I mean, I'm just making all this stuff up. See, our 30 rate 20 is a 155. So again, we're doing 230, so these watts there, multiplied by 65 and the 72, so 0 0.65 and 0 0.72 times the watts again. So I've just quickly ran through some of the questions. You can pause and take a look at the screen here. <clears throat> Basically what you're doing is you're converting the your 2K, your 5K split, and your 30 rate 20 splits into watts here, here, and here. And then you're multiplying each of those by this percentage that you want. You're gonna get your calculators out. Three, 302 times 0.45 equals 136. Now I'm just gonna quickly run through all these calculations for you. You basically just times your watts by the percentage in decimal form. So again, here we have our sort of watts. We can see, again, this is a good representation of what obviously I've randomly picked these numbers just off a guess, but why you kind of have to use a variety of like ways of calculating what your UT2 is gonna be. So we can see that the, the 2K ones are kind of similar, but these, the, um, these two aren't really similar. So a lot of factors to consider, but basically when we can convert these back, we can maybe look at these numbers here and probably think, okay, maybe this is an anomaly. Maybe this is my 30 rate 20 isn't quite what I want it to be. We can say, look at these sort of ranges of 136, look at 136 and 157 and 138 and 158 and say that's pretty accurate. Um, so again, we'll just pick, say a one, we'll pick the lower end of this one and the higher end of this one. So a one, three, six to a one, five, eight. Now again, going back into our pace calculator from concept two, a one, three, six <clears throat> is a two, 17 and a one, five, eight is a two, 10. So we're looking at two, 17 to around 
So again, we're looking at around a, a 217 to a 210 to a 210. I'm going to write these in a different order because that's just going to annoy me. 210. So now it can start to be coming together. Again, we've got our three things. We've got a percentage of test watts, we've got our RPE, and we've got our percentage of max heart rate. So you can use sort of these numbers, you know, your RPE, how it feels. And then lastly, our, our kind of rough calculations here. Okay, and then kind of the last part I wanted to talk about was uh, what sort of watts you should be doing for your high intensity. Now, of course, quite a tricky one to figure out. Again, depends on your strengths and your weaknesses. But basically, I'll give you some guidance where <clears throat> 30 rate 20 should be about 70% of your 2K watts. And say, just for a random example, a 3 by 2 k which is just an absolute classic session. Rest five minutes. That's I'm going to do that again because it's horrible. And I'll just say your last 2K of the 3 by 2 k so your last 2K, so your third 2K at rate 26 should be around like 85 to 86%. And again, roughly, you don't want to use splits, but roughly it's about 20 seconds, 22 seconds off your PB. It's kind of where you want to be for the 2K. What I would say uh, is a useful factor is that generally for your high intensity, when you're if I can give you one tip, when you're tired, again, a really important part is like knowing that your high intensity isn't always going to be of a high standard, especially if you're pushing volume. In fact, if your high intensity is always of a high standard, you could probably be pushing your volume a bit more. Say, I don't know, when you're tired, you're sad. Well, to be honest, when I was tired, I, I was happy because it meant I was pushing hard. But anyways, you're just going to use the sad face here. You can roughly use a percentage of around 70% of your kind of top form. So if you're 30 rate 20 score, and when you're tired, I would say you could be looking at your kind of average watts for a session. So say for a 30 rate 20, if you're sort of around the 92 area when you're really tired, then that's fine. Um, so say your 30 rate 20 is 300 watts. That's your PB on a, on a tired day would be t around 276 watts. Just something to consider as well when you're tired, you know, you should know that you don't always have to be super, super performing to your best. But yeah, and then again, the like, look, these videos I'm going, I realize I'm going on for a, a while. So your, your UT1 is roughly, you can use the heart rate, but you basically just want to push a little bit harder. You don't want to go much faster. Again, as I know I was talking about, you don't want to subtract splits, but roughly um, you want to look around taking three to six splits off your UT2, going down to your UT1 and kind of let the stroke rate go up to about uh, a 22 or so. You don't want to just totally send it just because you're going up the rates. It should still be the lower end of your, inten of your low intensity training. Yeah, I hope that was helpful. Our next one, we're going to be talking about rowing technique and rowing fundamentals, kind of talking through the stroke in some detail. Um, yeah, I hope you found that helpful. If you want to see more, if you've got any questions, uh, ask them down below if there's some content that you would like to see. You know, I'm still filming these, so I might be able to kind of have some more input from your comments. Like the video if you liked it, disliked it if, dislike it if you didn't like it. Um, but again, as I always say, if you don't want to help my channel, then the best thing to do is watch the video for five seconds and then leave. That tells the algorithm it's a bad video. And subscribe if you want to see more content.